Welcome back to Bloodthirsty Lord, but you can call me Lordy and tell me back on Paragon once again on the main screen because we're going to jump into a building guide video for Revenants before we start doing our gameplay videos very soon. That should be up later tonight, so it's going to be really hyped. Let's jump into our build as quick as possible. Let's go to our profile, let's go to our decks, and we should have our Revenant build somewhere there. Yes, it's called High Noon because obviously I come from playing Overwatch quite a bit and we play McCree there, so why not call it High Noon here as well? So this is our build and this is made. For the mid lane. Yes, I'm not playing in the carry lane. I'll make another build later on for the carry lane. But right now, I'm playing this in the mid lane. I want to test how strong this character is and how good is he at snowballing in the mid lane. Because I love playing mid lane, so I want to bring him to that lane and try to use him in that lane. So that's my idea for this build. So we have this prime card right here. Obviously, the notes are not appearing, but it usually does give you a good amount of power increase once the prime buff is activated. And then we move into our consumables, which are the health pot and also the healer token. The reason why I have these is because this character has no escape. So if anyone tries to jump on him when he's pretty much ready to be poked out, he's going to instantly die. So if I'm trying to trade with the enemy laner, I'm able to gain some health back from my healer token and health pot before anyone else could gank and try to kill me. And that gives me a great chance of surviving in my lane and staying longer in my lane to gain more car power and obviously pretty much sustain longer and get a bigger lead against the enemy team with XP because I can stay there for longer compared to the enemy laner. That's the idea. Usually the enemy mid laner or pretty much mid lane characters or players would usually take like two cast tokens or two strike tokens for damage output with the health pot. In this case, we haven't done that. So that's how we're going to start with our first three points into the game. So what I'm going to do right now is just to describe all the equipment that we have in our build and then later on describe when I'm going to use that or when what order I'm going to get that in. Starting off with the flash fire piston, Obviously, this card does provide a crazy amount of attack speed initially. Then we put more attack speed upgrades onto it as well. And then we have a full upgrade bonus of 6 power. Moving on to the next item, which is going to be our early game card, is Manstone Gem, which does give us an initial power increase, followed by 3 minor strikes as the upgrades, and then later on, the full upgrade being 5.5 attack speed. Really nice. Works well with the Flash Fire Piston. Then we have another Manstone Gem right now, which is going to be the one that's going to replace the other Manstone Gem, the early game version of it. This is like the final build one which is pretty much the exact same thing, but with higher strike tokens or higher strike upgrades, sorry, on the card for more damage output. And then we have the Sorcerer's Award, which is very useful in the early game to mid game because I just want to get a card that gives me a good amount of stats initially that I don't have to fully upgrade straight away, and I can also use it for vision. Sorcerer's Ward is the way to go. So that's why I got that, which will provide us with the initial stacks of power, ability to pen, life steal, and obviously with a unique active of being able to place Shadow Wards on the map to gain vision. Really great. Then we move on to the more damage output slash um, penetration through ability, and that is the Meltdown cards. Initially, 12 power, 2 ability pen. Once fully upgraded, it gives you 6 power. This upgrades are 2 major cast and 1 major shock with 6 ability pen. Then the other Meltdown is just pure major cast as the upgrades. And they're pretty high cost cards, around 12, or exactly 12. Then we have the Sage Ward, which is going to replace... One of our cards at the very end is like the unique cards I want to take or the optional cards I have in my deck. In case I have any more vision on the map, I'm going to help my team by doing that if I get the Sage Ward. And this card altogether equals 10 points. We've got 6 power, 50 health. Then with the full upgrade bonus of 6 power, 2 major strike and 1 minor cast just for crazy damage output. Then we have our attack speed item, one of our attack speed items, which is called Wind Cover Blade, which will give us initially 6 power, 5.5 attack speed, followed up by the upgrades of Minor Connect, Connect, and Major Cast, plus the full upgrade of 12 power. So it's increasing power like crazy, but we're still getting that attack speed that we need. And then another two optional cards I have in my deck are Blink Shot, obviously because it's really unique on this character. I'm going to explain maybe in my next video when I'm actually playing it. But that's a, um, the reason why I take this is obviously Kill Reset, and potential to get kills and keep going with this character is pretty high. So that's the idea for that build. And obviously I'm going to keep this at the very end as one of the optional cards in my build. So it's got two strike upgrades and a minor cast. Then we have Necker Rail, which is a very interesting card. Initially gives you uh, two ability pen, six power, plus a unique passive on playing kill into the shadow plane for three seconds. We got two strike upgrades and one minor cast. No full upgrade on this card, which is really great if you're able to get kills all the time. Necker Rail and Blink Shot really help. But if I'm having trouble getting kills, Sage Ward is the way to go to gain vision in order to help us get kills as a team. That's the idea for that. So quickly, we're going to explain the order of my build, starting off with Health Pot and Healer Token, moving on to our early game items being Manstone Gem and Sorcerer's Ward. Those are the items I would like to get in the early game as much as possible, depending on the situation. Then we'll move on to the actual other cards being Wind Cover Blade, then into a Manstone Gem or Flash Fire Piston, depending if I want more damage or more attack speed. I choose one or the other. 
Then we go into Meltdown cards for more damage. And depending on the situation, I can get a Sagewood at any time, a Blink Shot at any time, or Necrovel at any time to take to the end game build. Or if I don't like that card, I can discard it for Blink Shot. If I don't like Blink Shot, I can discard it for Sage Ward. It's always depending on the situation. That's what makes this build so great. And that is why the High Noon signal from Revenant is going to be really high, mates. <laughs> I don't know what I made. But whatever. I'm having fun here. And I can't wait to play this character. It's going to be so bloody amazing. I want to see how many kills you can get. If anyone gets a pent on the first day, please send it to me. I want to see that. Because I feel like that's going to look bloody amazing. But that is my build for now. I'm going to make another two builds on different lanes. Because I feel like this hero... Is so versatile in the way it's been created. It helps by the player using it in a certain playing style and then obviously in a certain build, which can make it work completely differently from another build. So that's what I like about it. This build had a lot of power, attack speed, and ability penetration, as in that order. And obviously, power is really great for your base attacks and also ability attacks that you do have. So that is my build. Tell me your builds in the comment section down below as well. And what do you think about my build? Do you think it's good? Do you think it's bad? What do you think I need to improve on it? Because right now I feel like it's in a good position. I want to keep testing and playing it in mid lane and see how good it goes. But tell me your thoughts and your opinions in the comment section down below. So make sure you did enjoy this video. Show you below, smash that button, like button. Let's try to get 200 likes on this video. Make sure to see more powerful gaming content and gaming content in general on my channel. All you have to do is share with your friends and hit the subscribe button to become a mate today. And that is all for this video. I will time to go, but don't you worry. I'll be back very soon. Hang your boys, because you ain't seen nothing yet. Oh my god, mate. You thought McCree from Overwatch is scary whenever you play Overwatch. Revenant is at a whole different level. <laughs>